Welcome to Unfold Data Science. My name is Aman and I am a data scientist. In this video, I am going to talk about some key trends in AI. Not only at superficial level, like people are talking that AI will replace our jobs, etc. We are going to think analytically and understand how these trends are going to impact our lives as data scientists and where we should focus more and where we should focus less. Okay, so let's take all these trends one by one and try to understand how we can shape ourselves so that we stay relevant. Please ensure you watch this video till end guys. It's a well researched video and many useful information for you. Okay, so first trend that you may be noticing or um, you know everywhere there is talk about this right generative AI or you know big time language models. So what is generative AI and big time language models? I'm sure many of you would have used chat GPT kind of thing and just you know, you go there, write a question, it gives you answer. I'm not sure if some of you have used an app called Paragraph AI. If not, please use it, okay? And you will know what all these generative models or what all these high-end natural language models are doing. Now, my question to you as data scientist is, um, what do you think uh, will get impacted in our lives due to that? As a data science professional, I'm asking, not as a, as a common person. As a data science professional, I'm asking. So let me tell you how we used to solve a, a NLP use case, right? You will take text data, you will do basic cleaning, you will do tokenization, stemming, you will map the words, you will create some analysis, you will create some POS tagging, many things you will do, right? But all these models are so advanced in nature, you no need to do all these things, still you can use these models. So now ChatGPT API is coming, so you can directly use ChatGPT, right? So where data scientist will be needed? So there will be two kinds of data scientists, okay? One who is super smart, super intelligent, super good with how to build these heavy models, okay? But remember guys, the demand for those kind of people will always be limited because a company will not have, let's say, 100 of super intelligent data scientists. They can have a limited number, okay? Because those kind of people are limited, you know, in market as well. And we don't need, you know, more of these kind of specific people. What we need is somebody who can use these heavy end models, do some kind of transfer learning and customize it for a, for a particular use case, right? So for example, if I want to use chat GPT for a, let's say medical analysis, I want to use chat GPT or some kind of delay two, if I'm pronouncing it right, that generates some image, right? So how will I use as a data scientist, the already built model and I can build a customized solution. So what I'm saying here is you and me should focus more on how to use that is already built and then build a tailored solution, build actionable insights from that, build something that is tangible and that has to be quick. It should not be time taking. Okay. That has to be quick and there is no, no need of going forward. I believe there is no need of reinventing the wheel. So wheel has been done. Now we have to use the wheel and we have to kind of use it for our purposes. If you have not used Paragraph AI and I have noted Delay 2, right? Please go ahead and just see what these two tools can do. Fine. Second trend I want to talk here is we have to understand guys what can be automated and what cannot be automated. Okay. MLOps is one area. Lot of people are talking about it and everything is there. I agree with that. But you have to understand MLOps comes from DevOps. Okay. And in DevOps, many things are automatable. Automatable means uh, somebody can write a code that can automate things that is done as part of MLOps. It has not happened till now at a large scale, but you have to agree on this fact that it is doable. So tomorrow somebody can write a code that can automate lot of things in MLOps. For example, versioning, for example, retraining, for example, drift analysis, for example, um, you know, how to judge if the model is doing good or not doing good. All these things can be in some way or other automated. What cannot be automated? That is where we should focus on and that is your subject knowledge. That is how data scientists can analyze the data. I have noted there is a scope for automation on everything, but modeling side, what is your expertise, right? Uh, suppose you worked on eight different use cases or 10 different use cases. From all that 10 different use cases, whatever you have learned, how can that be automated? That cannot be automated. So you and me should focus more on something which cannot be automated. So one example of that can be feature engineering stuff. One example of can that be 
how to do non traditional data cleaning so what is traditional data cleaning insert mean median all these will be done by tools automated what cannot be automated some different way of doing data cleaning okay so we have to focus on non automatable things in data science arena ml ops obviously one of the big trends to look forward third trend i want to look forward uh, i want to talk here is from related to ml ops itself see ml ops can be automated everything in ml ops can be automated but let me ask you one question suppose i tell you hey uh, there is a cost of living crisis going in uk so tell me uh, how data science ai and ml can help in understanding who are the people who can who can fall into financial crisis in coming quarter now from your domain understanding you will start thinking okay so people can fall in financial crisis if these kind of behaviors are there what are those behaviors maybe somebody has done loan you know default uh, few times in in last few months maybe somebody has taken a big loan maybe somebody has you know uh, taken a big house and not able to manage the mortgage properly somebody has you know moved from a high cost area to a low cost area so some of these indicators tell you that these people may be going little weak on the finances and hence they may fall into cost of living crisis in coming quarter coming year etc now you have to understand guys whatever whatever examples i give you right all these comes from where all these comes from the domain understanding right so if i understand how the personal finance work how you know um, how i will be financially independent or strong and these things and how i may fall into cost of living crisis then only i can formulate okay this is how the solution can be built these are the metric that can be captured one important thing that to note here is domain understanding domain analysis okay so please focus more on understanding one domain in deep okay understand one domain in deep that will help you a lot next trend i want to talk about here is something known as low code or no code now guys one thing you have to understand the battle ground for data scientist in coming time okay the battle ground is not going to be how how great code aman can write and how mediocre code you can write that's not the battle ground okay so it's not like if aman can write great code that is good but that's not the main thing so i want to draw your attention towards couple of tools here one is called sway ai okay go on their website and see what all they can do without you writing any single line of code also there is another website called akkio i will paste the link just go there and see what all these guys can do without any code so also if you know about azure ml studio or aws sage maker many things are happening without you even writing a single line of code right and if these things are happening then what is the need of a data scientist try to think like that so suppose anything they they will be writing good quality code right they will not write bad quality code so if i am writing you know super quality code my super quality of code writing capability may not be that much needed if i am writing mediocre code with these all low code and no code solutions i can still make a very good model yeah that can do a great job in the production that is what the focus area is so as a data scientist uh, your focus area should not be a uh, being a super coder okay your focus area should be how i can provide value how i can solve a business case how i can give actionable insights try to understand this guys low code no code is going to come and replace many uh, you can say hardcore programming things in data science okay and then i also want to tell you all these things that i have told now for example ml ops i am saying can be automated and will be automated low code no code can optimize or automate many things we can use some pre built models and do transfer learning and use that we can do some kind of generative ai and lot of our works can be done from that so what is happening in all these is the the time of a data scientist is getting freed up so if i am a data scientist let's say 100% of my time some time goes in uh, data cleaning some time goes in something else by doing all these things right what's happening is my time is getting freed so it's not that nothing is expected from me right there are responsibilities coming on to your shoulders as a data scientist what are these responsibilities try to understand this i don't know if you have tested this but if you go to chat gpt and say something which is controversial or which is you know religious figure if you say something like that right 
it will say I cannot answer this is a this is a sentimental topic. So what is this? This is called the ethical AI. Okay. So AI solution that you are building should be should have some ethics in that. It cannot do any random thing. How do you do that in your solution? That is one area where data scientists need to focus. Okay. Ethical AI and explainable AI. So when I throw my data to neural network, neural network tell me that okay, this guy will default, this guy will not default in loan prediction, right? So why? What parameters are being used? What parameters are getting associated with a default? What parameters are not being given value? All these things we have to understand so that we understand the uh, why some output is coming. Okay. So here I am talking about two things. One is explainable AI that will open that so called black box of AI and other is ethical AI. So your solution should have both these things. So if your time of coding, if your time of time of data cleaning, if your time of repetitive automation is kind of getting freed up, this is where your time should go. How to build a solution that explains itself, how to build a solution that is ethical, how to build a solution that is actionable, that is scalable, that is, you know, objective is very clear. And then I move to the next solution. That is the focus area for data scientists. Next thing I want to talk here is, of course, I, I covered five, six things, but um, all of you know and no need to mention cloud is gaining momentum because of multiple regions, right? And then auto ML is one area that is, you know, related to low code, no code, we can say, or auto ML means automatically doing many stuff. Then your more data is going to come because big data is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And sustainable AI is another area which will be focused because, you know, many organizations are talking about sustainable stuffs in all their business areas, right? You can prove your worth in domain understanding. You can prove your worth in super class feature engineering. You can prove your worth in ethical solutions. You can prove your worth in explanation solution. You can prove your worth in customized solution for a particular business case. You can prove your worth in using something which is already available and customizing it quickly to give, you know, actionable insights to a business. That is where you and me should focus more. Remember guys, if you are not a super coder, no need to be worried. If you are a medium level, try to be jack of all trades. Things will fall in sync. Industry is changing very, very rapidly. And that is where I thought of covering all these points so that you have some idea of where to put more focus and where to put less focus. I hope you like this video guys. If yes, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to Unfold Data Science if you have not done yet. See you all in the next video. Wherever you are, stay safe and take care.